Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. And you might remember from a previous video that we have been testing a Koenig race car on the Mete racetrack. And during one of the trials, I had a friend of mine who was driving behind me and he flagged me that something was wrong and I could feel that the rear end was a bit loose. So when I pulled into the pit, I checked out the car and I found that the rose joint, which is supporting the lower wristbone, actually had sheared off. It's this rose joint that actually snapped off the bolt right there. So in this video, we're going to look a little bit deeper into rose joints because there have been all kinds of discussions on rose joints, which ones you should use and which ones you shouldn't use. So I decided to dig a bit deeper into this topic and then provide this video to you for whatever it's worth. So let's start. And here we have the broken rose joint and as you can see it snapped right at the nut position. In this close-up you can see the lines on the rod where it actually broke, a clear indication that we were dealing with a radial load which was too much for the rod itself. Now on the racetrack you accelerate fast, you brake hard so you're putting a lot of stress on the whiz bones and that is then transferred towards the rose joint that we see here and I can actually feel it on how that must have happened. There were a lot of discussions on the specific rose joint if this was an agriculture one or not just because it has a greasing point but the reality is uh, rose joints can come maintenance free and with maintenance and if they are with maintenance you have a greasing point. So I decided to investigate this part and this is a Fluido GAX12 and 12 stands for an M12 and I started surfing the internet and there's a lot of information on it. I found out that it's a heavy duty rose joint and not one for racing purposes as such. The company is Fluido located in Germany, a very well known company apparently, providing lots of spreadsheets and data and if I look up this part then I could find that the static load is only 42 kN, but the dynamic load, which is even more important, is as low as 13.5 kN. So let us have a look now on actual load and radial load, what it means and how we can calculate it. Actual load is the load that is going along the axis of the rod, and how much the rod deforms depends heavily on the tensile of the material, and if it's steel, it's between 250 and 600 megapascal. If we're talking about radial load, then we're talking about perpendicular uh, to the axis loads. And again, it depends a bit on how strong the metal is and the shear factor for that metal. So if you are racing with the car on the track, you're going to accelerate fast, you're going to slow down fast, you're going to take fast turns. And that is all putting both radial and actual loads onto the suspension and the rose joints. Now we're getting into some calculations. You can calculate the actual load very simple with the formula shown. So you take the cross-sectional area of the rod end and you multiply it by the tensile strength of the material. The radial load can also be calculated and you take again the cross-sectional area of the rod, which is letter A, and you multiply it by the shear strength. And then finally, we have the radial plus the actual load together on a car. And for that one, we need to use a calculation or formula, which we call the von Mises criteria. And I've shown you the calculation on the right hand side. I'm not going to get into the details, but you can actually find that out for yourself. And then finally, we need to consider a safety factor for all of it, which is typically around two. So now let's take an example. We're going to go for a cross-sectional area A of 100 uh, square millimeters. The ultimate tensile strength out is 500 milli megapascal. The shear strength T is 300 megapascal. And the safety factor, let's assume it is 2. So the actual load capacity can be easily be calculated. So we take the 100 square millimeters multiplied by 500 megapascal. That gives us 50,000 newton. And then the safe factor is, of course, the 50,000 Newton divided by 2 because we got a safety factor of 2, giving us 25,000 Newton of the actual load capacity. We can then also calculate the radial load capacity, which is the 100 square millimeters multiplied by the shear strength T, which is 300. That gives us 30,000 Newton. 
and then on the safe side we divide the 30,000 by 2 which is then giving us 50,000 newton meter. So now let's do an example and we're going to do a combined load capacity. Now for ease of calculation we assume that the F axial is 15,000 newton and the radial is 10,000 newton meter. So the combined load capacity is then O axial 15,000 divided by 100 is 150 megapascal. T radial is 10,000 divided by 100 is 100 megapascal. So if we then apply the von Mises formula, we ending up with 229 megapascal. And if you now want to know what the safe factor is, you divide the 500 tensile strength by 229 and you get a factor of 2.18, which is good because we want to have two. Now I do understand that not everybody wants to get in all these calculations and work it all out. And the good thing is you can find a lot of data sheets on the internet and all the details you need to know for your specific race car. And that is why it's always good to use rose joints or rod ends that are created and built for motorsports by, by real proper companies and no Chinese cheap stuff because that is playing with your life. So let's do a practical lookup now on a data sheet and determine what we need. So if you select a decent company, then you can download the brochures. And this is a motorsports brochure from Fluro. Now I'm not making a commercial for Fluro, but as you can see, it is a well-known company. They have good contacts and they provide you a lot of technical detail. You can download all these data sheets from them. And this is exactly what you want. And as you can see here, I downloaded the motorsports brochure. It lists all the different types and the specifics of it. And you can see that there is a GAXSWMS. The W stands for maintenance free. The one that I had, the old one was a GAXS, which had maintenance. But the MS part at the end refers back to motorsports. And that's going to give you a much, much higher dynamic load. And you'll see that in a few seconds. They have further explanations on all these rose joints or rod ends. And it's great to see that they even talk about Formula Fords or alikes and the details and some additional little points to pay attention to. And then you have the technical information where they talk about the static load ratings and the dynamic load ratings, how they have measured it and how they calculated it. Torque is also very important because you don't want to have any play on those bearings. So that's all kind of preloaded. And they talk about the temperatures for the PTFE liner, which is the maintenance free uh, rod, of course. And then the hardness table, the comparison between the different countries. So this is the rod I should have got the GAX SWMS and M12. And in the table, I can look that up. And while I'm looking that up, I will notice that my static radial load is 42 kilonewton, which is the same as my other one that I had in the car. But the dynamic radial load is 38.4 kilonewton, where the old one was only 30.5 kilonewton. So it's about three times that. And that is most likely the reason why it actually snapped under this uh, too, heavy, uh, too heavy radial load. So if you wonder what is the static load, well, that's the maximum load that is permissible on a rod end at its weakest cross section that it can withstand without developing permanent distortion. But it doesn't mean really a lot because as you could see, my old one and the motorsports one have the same static load. What really matters is the dynamic load. And the dynamic load is the load caused by oscillation, rotation or pivot under load. And that's what happens when you take fast turns, you accelerate fast, you brake hard. And that will establish the working life of rod ends. And as you have seen, uh, the motorsports rod for the same type that I have, uh, but the motorsports is about three times as strong. And this is what should have been on this race car. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it was very technical, but sometimes we have to do this. I want to know often on how things break and why they break and what I should do to prevent it. 
because at the end of the day, you're playing with your life on the racetrack. So thank you for viewing and I will see you in my next video. Thank you and by all means, make comments.